So the first thing we are going to do is I have heated up my milk, and this is one and a half cups of milk. And I'm going to put half of that into my mixer. And this has been warmed up to roughly 100 degrees. Roughly 100 degrees. It doesn't have to be exact. And then I'm going to put in my six tablespoons of regular plain sugar. This is organic cane sugar. I'm gonna let that mix, mix in a little bit. And then I have a tablespoon and a half of active dry yeast. And I'm just going to add that to my sugar and milk. But it is important that your milk's not too hot. Yes. Because what, because what will it do? It will kill off the yeast. But as long as it's not over 115 degrees Fahrenheit, it will not kill the yeast, unless something really crazy happens. All right, and you're just activating the yeast right now? Yes. Making sure it's all in the milk. And then I'm just gonna shut this off and let it sit for two to five minutes just to let it bloom. So our yeast has been sitting for around two minutes and you can see it's starting to get nice and frothy. And then the next thing we need to do is add our four cups of flour. And this is just regular all-purpose flour. I'm gonna try to do it without spilling it. And remind me, Jules, how many this recipe uh, makes estimation. Uh, the last time I made it, it made 20 croissants. And they're, they were a good size. They were pretty decent yeah. croissants, so. And I, butter croissants seem a little, like, scary. Go ahead, what do you want to do? Two teaspoons of sea salt. And then the rest of my milk. And then I'm just going to mix this on low and let it all come together. And we can look at each other and have fun. <laughs> so you can smile at each other. I would say that, at least to me at first, like butter croissants seemed a little intimidating. But as Jules figured out this recipe and tweaked it, it was like, OK, we can do this. And it will be a fun treat and uh, a really cost-effective way to make them at home. I mean, I feel like you can make, I'd have to do the numbers, you can make a whole batch for like what it costs for like two croissants from a coffee shop or something. It's just crazy, it's so expensive. Um, so these are really good. And this croissant recipe in particular is actually a very simplified recipe. Like I found like a cheater version and it cuts the time in at least half. Well, and tweaked it to kind yes. of bring out a little bit more flavor in it because yes. it was a little bland at first when you yes. first made them. So they're really good. You guys are gonna like them and try them. All right, so the dough's combining nicely. Yeah, looks perfect. And I'm just gonna let this knead for two minutes, not very long, just enough to get it nice and combined, nice and smooth. Okay, so this has been kneading for around two minutes and it's nice and well combined. And then I'm just gonna transfer it to my other bowl you don't have to transfer it. I just have something else I need to make. So. <laughs> There's always more to make. Always, more to make. <laughs> always more recipes to do here. These kids are always hungry. Yeah. You love it though. Yeah. I like to use my hands. And you can see it's moderately sticky, like it's not super sticky. Like it's still workable. It smells so good, the activated yeast in that just like smells delicious already. And it doesn't even have the butter in it yet. It smells so good. All right, so what's the plan with this dough? I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap and let it rise for in a warm place for about an hour. Okay, we are back and the croissant dough looks ready to go. It's been rising for one hour yes. in a warm spot and Julianne's gonna tell us what's next. Okay, so I'm gonna take this out of the bowl you're definitely gonna want some flour for dusting on this part. It can be a little bit messy, but it's not too bad. Oh, it smells so good. I love the smell of yeast. It just smells so nice. There we go. Here, I can take that. Thank you. And then what I'm gonna do is just kind of knock out all the big air pockets, and roll it around in the flour so it doesn't stick. Okay, I'm gonna roll this into you know, a nice thin log. And then I'm gonna divide this into 16 different pieces. 
Julianne is the queen at eyeballing, which should make you all feel very good because when she kind of wings it with things, you guys are, it's gonna turn out for you, okay? And there's some grace in this. If you only get 14, it's gonna be okay, you know? Yeah, you can get anywhere between 14 and 16 and it's totally fine. Okay. Okay, now what we're going to do, set these all aside. We're each gonna take a piece. All right. And then you're just gonna wanna work it into a disc with your fingers first. Then I'm gonna take my rolling pin, make sure you keep plenty of flour on it, and roll it out until it's nearly see-through. Is it okay if we add flour to this? Yes, so it won't dry it out too much? To Does the shape really matter too much? I try to stay relatively circular. They end up being kind of wonky circles or triangles, but it works. Now, I watched you do this the other day, and what you are doing in this step is, this is part of the process of creating the layers. Yes. Of, you know when you eat those croissants and you open them up and they look just, you can see all the beautiful swirls of layers in there? That's what this process is. So this is the part that takes a little bit of time. And I've got that one layer done. You can see it's probably like it's like the shape, the size of my size hand. Of my hand, which is my hand's kind of small. And it's really, like six inches by six inches. And it doesn't have to be pretty, right? I mean, in this part, no. Because we'll explain later. This part is just kind of rolling it out. So can I? Le I'm just gonna leave mine like this. Yeah, maybe a little thinner. Okay. Hand. Some pieces are bigger than others, just because I did eyeball it. What you could do, if you were really technical with it, is get your scale, measure your entire log, divide it by 16, and cut it accordingly. But I'm not going to do that. All right, this is pretty thin now. I will think yeah, that it'll good. rip. Where do you want this? Here. Or do you want me to start doing the butter layers? Here, I can start the okay. butter. I'll show them that. Okay, so I'm gonna right continue to roll. I have one cup of softened butter. And then what I'm going to do is take maybe two teaspoons of that butter and kind of just spread it along this first layer. And then I'm gonna put this other one right on top of it and put more butter on top. And this ends up being roughly, I don't know, just under a tablespoon per layer or just over a tablespoon per layer. It depends on how much, how many of your little things you get. Okay, so we are gonna continue to layer this. You're gonna see us rolling these out. You're gonna see uh, Julianne putting, so like this one is a, is a completed one. Yep. I'm gonna put that on there. Again, don't worry about how it looks right now. It's all gonna come together later, okay? So now she's gonna layer butter, dough, butter, dough, and so on. And this is what you do instead of laminating the dough, which requires a series of chilling and freezing the dough and mixing in the butter and doing that many, many times. Okay, so this is the last layer that we rolled out, and remember she was layering uh, the... the Butter and the dough. The dough um, that has been rolled out into these little circles. And you can see, I mean, this pile is about the size of a plate, you know, a dinner plate. And notice I don't put any butter on the top, and you don't put any butter before the first layer. Keep all the butter <laughs> right, you know, between the dough. Between the layers. And recap, the reason you're doing this is so you can kind of skip the step of laminating the dough yes, and which is cutting and in all that and butter. Yes. yes, so this is the nice, easier way. And this whole process should only take you, if you were doing it by yourself and making all these little uh, pancakes of dough, we'll call it, these little layers of dough, they sh it should only take you between 10 and 15 minutes max. So it's yeah. not that long um, for the whole process. So now, Julianne is putting this onto a plate. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna cover it with plastic wrap. So there's no sticking incidents. Woo! It does not like me today. There we go. I'm gonna. Do you want me to put some here too? And then here. Okay. There we go. Can I have another piece? Sure. There we go. I'm gonna seal it all in here. Okay. Thank you. I'll pull it on top. 
up. There we go. Okay, now I'm just gonna put this monstrosity <laughs> into the freezer for about half an hour, just enough for it to firm up enough to work with. And then we're ready to actually make our croissants. It's got, a, this, this process has steps, but they're easy steps. They're pretty quick steps. We're taking our time to explain it to you guys so you can do it. But really, if you're doing it, you just kind of do it quickly and it, it's really not that big of a deal. It's pretty easy and self-explanatory once you follow all the steps. So once these are, this is fully chilled, we'll come check back in with you guys. All right, our layered dough and butter is fully chilled. It's nice and cold to the touch. All right, what do we do next? I'm going to remove all of this plastic wrap. Flour. And then really what I'm just gonna do is roll this until it's about a quarter of an inch thick. And while she's rolling that, I am, uh, once you're all done and the croissants look like croissants and you're about to put them into the oven, you, you gotta have an egg wash on them. But we only want the yolk, correct? So I'm gonna separate an egg for Jules here. So you can see all of those little layers that we put together have become one giant slab and it makes it much easier to work with once it's chilled. So you definitely don't wanna skip the chilling process. And you wanna to try to keep this circular because it helps to give the croissants their very signature crescent shape. Okay, that's ready whenever you're ready. Okay, I think this is pretty good. Let's Do you have see. enough room? I think we so. have two cookie sheets with parchment ready to go. Okay, you can actually see the layers of butter yeah, you can see it like some of the butter layers. It's all like swirled in, that's what you want. It's what gives the very flaky layers inside of the croissant. Now I'm gonna cut this across. I'm just gonna use a pizza cutter. And I'm gonna cut it in thirds from there. So it's gonna have six pieces. And then I'm gonna cut each of these three, or each of these sixths into thirds. And then I'm just gonna do a little, little notch right here, just to split it. Then I'm gonna use it and roll it. And just gently. You're not putting any force, you're just, just letting it, it go on its own. We need some space between them, right? They're gonna rise pretty good. This one is a little big, so I might cut this one into four. I'll use this one for my experiment. Okay. If we weren't making enough, she's making apple turnovers too, but we can't fit that all in this video. <laughs> so some of, some of this dough is gonna go for apple turnovers, but sure? yes, which, yes. Kind of throw these yeah. apart so it helps Wisp to make it, them make them bigger, okay. Ooh. Look at, and you guys can see they look just like, you know, like a croissant. Yeah, Is it okay if they, if, do I need to attach them here? I try to keep them kind of on the downside just so when, like, on the underside. Okay. So when they rise, they don't okay. fall apart. You wanna hand me a couple when you're ready? Yes. Then because I am experimenting, I won't get a full 20 croissants, but I did get 20 last time when I did a full batch. Right, we need some of the dough this time. Yeah. Cause we have to eat the apple turnovers. Well, this one's a little okay. thick. This one's kind of, is this okay? Thickness wise? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, make sure you see And I try to only put nine on one cookie sheet just because they do, they blow up. A lot. Between the rising and the baking. Okay, so we have these made. Like I said, normally you, if you make this recipe, you'll get like around 20 croissants. We needed to save some dough to make some apple turnovers. So what do we do now? 
So we are just gonna let them be like this for half an hour and then right before they go into the oven, we're going to egg wash them. And then they go in the oven for? Around 20 minutes at 395 degrees and keep them on your top shelf. Yes, other, right, because you don't want crisp, like too crispy of bottoms and our oven likes to bake the bottom kind of too crispy. So, all right, we're almost there. <laughs> They're beautiful. Okay. There we go. All right, perfect. We love these croissants because one time I was at this uh, bakery and I saw these rustic looking croissants instead of the, I don't know, the ones you see every day and they're just so beautiful. I just love them. They're farmhouse croissants. They're farmhouse croissants, that's right. They're and they're delicious. You can, they smell just like store-bought uh, croissants, but better because they're hot and fresh. So they're beautiful. And they're actually crunchy on the outside as opposed to just like fluffy all the way through, which I like because I'm a crust person. So we hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, tell us some of your favorite recipes to make at home from your stockpile. And uh, we'll talk to y'all soon.